In the last video, we said that the derivative will kind of quote unquote distribute over addition and subtraction, meaning that the power rule is going to play nicely with addition and subtraction. They're not going to drastically change the way we take a derivative. But that's not true for multiplication and division. We went out of our ways just to explicitly state that. So if we come across problems like that, that involve multiplication and division, like in, oh, say, part A or part B here, um, you want to first of all think about how we can rewrite these because I can't just say well I'm gonna take the derivative of the numerator and take the derivative of the denominator and that's my answer that's not the case here here the division problems I actually think are a little bit trickier but know that if I have multiple terms in my numerator in that single denominator I can rewrite this as 5 divided by x minus 3x divided by x plus 4x squared over x. So here is my function. I've just found a, a different way to write it. Right? If, in, normally you wouldn't write it this way. Most of the time you would start here and then try and work your way backwards to that once you have your common denominator. But here I want to kind of split this up into as many terms as possible because now I can go through and either simplify these or rewrite these with negative exponents if I know I'm going to be left with a power of x in the denominator. So for example, if I look at 5 over x, I know that's really 5x to the minus 1. And right now, I'm not taking any derivatives. I'm at the step where I'm just getting ready to take a derivative. So I'm going to write that as 5x to the minus 1. Here, minus 3x over 3, I know that the x's will cancel, so I'm left with just minus 3. And 4x squared over x, I know that my x's will cancel, so I'll be left with plus 4x. So here is my original function. I have not yet taken the derivative, but I've made it so that it's easier for me to take the derivative. I can go ahead and say, well, f prime of x, I'm going to multiply by my power here, so negative 5x to the minus 2 power. Derivative of negative 3, that's just going to be 0 since that's a constant. And 4x, well that's going to be plus 4 simply. So we can leave our answer like this, or if you prefer a positive exponent, negative 5 over x squared plus 4. Here is my derivative. Oops, and either one of these I would say is fine. Either one of these is okay. So it's all about trying to find a way to rewrite that so your problem doesn't involve using division. Same thing, we're going to use kind of the same idea here in part B. We've got this multiplication here. We've got 2x minus 5 quantity squared. Remember that this really means 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5. Now as much as I'd like to, I can't just take the derivative of this factor and then take the derivative of this factor and then multiply them together. I, I will not get the correct answer. So here I am going to have to foil this out. I'm going to have to multiply my terms together. So here if I multiply 2x times 2x, I've got 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 minus 10x. Negative 5 times 2x minus 10x plus 25. So I've got 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. And notice here at this point, I haven't actually taken the derivative. I've, again, I've just gotten my function ready to take the derivative. So this is still g of x over here, which means I still need to apply my power rule, which when I take the derivative, I should have 8x minus 20. Hey, there we go. So that is my derivative. And just, just to show for a second, I, I want to take a second just to show that I wouldn't get the right answer. Let's pretend for a moment that the way I, so I rewrote this as 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5. I'm going to say, well, what if I had just taken the derivative of this and then taken the derivative of this? If I could take the derivative of each factor separately, then I should end up with 8x minus 20. 
Well, if I take the derivative of 2x minus 5, I know that's going to be 2. Take the derivative of 2x minus 5, I know that's going to be 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. But 4, that's way different than my actual answer of 8x minus 20. And so because I know I know foiling works, I, that's something we've learned since algebra, um, and we know how the power rule works, we, we know that this has to be our solution, which means that taking derivatives over multiplication is just not going to work this way. We'll talk about how to take derivatives over uh, multiplication and division for more complex functions in the next chapter. But for right now, if you come across a problem that involves multiplication or division, you need to be thinking about how can we rewrite that function so that it does not involve multiplication or division.